Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Gold, joining you on Tuesday as we edge closer and closer towards that big, big game on Thursday night, Tottenham versus Arsenal. God, just saying it makes me nervous. I'll be at London Colney tomorrow for Mikel Arteta's press conference ahead of that game. Antonio Conte has been speaking today and uh, I shall bring you some of the comments that he's had to say ahead of that match a little bit later on in this video. But I wanted to start today on a weird sort of transfer story that's doing around at the moment. You might have seen it. I've had a fair few questions about it on my social media channels, which is why I'm, I decided I'd talk about it on this video because it's one of those ones that you look at and you think, what, what is that about? Um, it's about Thomas Partey. He's been linked with Juventus. I'm not actually sure where the first story started from, but it's been picked up by various media and sort of regurgitated. Um, and it's sort of stating that Juventus are in for Thomas Partey. They were um, sort of interested in offering Arthur as part of the deal. And the, the main thing about it was it kind of the report, the initial report seemed to suggest there was some sort of rift between Thomas Partey and Mikel Arteta. And that might be why the our uh, party is open to leaving and why Juventus are going to come in and sort of test Arsenal's resolve in the summer. Just a, a really weird transfer story. And as far as I'm aware, there's absolutely nothing to worry about uh, on this one. People that I've spoken to have just said, who are close to Thomas Partey, have said, saying this is absolutely not the case. And I don't know where it's come from. It's just people making trouble. There is no rift, nothing of the sort. They've got a very good relationship. Thomas Partey and Mikel Arteta, he's absolutely happy in Arsenal. At Arsenal, there's been no contact with Juventus, nothing like that. And it just seems like it's a really odd story written um, without any sort of truth to be honest and it's just a really odd story and like I said I wouldn't normally actually comment on it because it's one of those ones I just brush over and be like, I'm, not, I'm not discussing it but it's because I've had so many of you getting in touch and asking about it that I felt like I should probably say something about it so as far as I'm concerned there's just really nothing to worry about when it comes to Thomas Partey and this these stories that you're probably seeing being replicated in a fair few sort of media outlets about him potentially being a target for Juventus and him being open to the idea as far as I'm aware like I said he's very very happy in North London there is no rift or anything like that between him and Mikel Arteta they very have a very good relationship party's already looking forward to next season in terms of his fitness now I don't think any of you should be getting too excited about the prospect of Thomas Party playing again this season Mikel Arteta has basically admitted it but Party is working very very hard he himself hasn't given up hope for playing again this season that's not changed. We said that at the time he got the injury. He's always been working very hard to try and get himself involved, even if it's just for the final game against Everton, um, as a as a sort of substitute appearance, just to be involved in it one way or the other. He's working really hard behind the scenes in the gym, you know, on his own um, to try and get himself as fit as possible. Apparently, he is doing very very well. His recovery is going well perhaps even ahead of schedule but even so I still think it's unlikely that we're going to see Thomas Pye again certainly in terms of having a big impact on these final three games of the season not at all if there's going to be any sighting of Thomas Pye in an Arsenal shirt before the end of the season it will be in that Everton game and it would be as a substitute appearance but I'm still not holding out too much hope and hopefully by the time that Everton game rolls around anyway it's not going to be an important game and uh, everything will have been decided by then and uh, it won't be, there won't be anything to play for so it doesn't matter if he's fit or not so yeah I wouldn't be getting too excited about the prospect of Thomas Partey coming in and suddenly coming into the midfield over the final few games of the season and to be honest anyway Mohamed Elneny is doing such a fantastic job uh, I think the biggest credit we can give Mohamed Elneny at this point of the season is that Arsenal haven't really massively missed Thomas Partey since his injury because and then he's come in and he's played so, so well in the games against Chelsea, United, West Ham, the weekend against Leeds, hopefully against Tottenham on Thursday night. He's come in and he's shown how professional he is, he's shown how good he is and he's shown how much he wants to play for Arsenal. And the fact he's doing this all on the back of having no contract left, basically going to be a free agent in the summer. Lots of players could have been kind of zoned out by now and just already thinking about their potential next move or anything like that. But he's been... Bang on it, kept himself in tip-top shape in training. So when his chance does arrive, like it has, he's come in and he's made an impact. And I think you've just got to give Mohamed Oni massive, massive credit for that. And like I said, the fact that Arsenal at this stage, with, without Thomas Partey, you can say that they haven't massively missed him. Obviously, you would still want him here. You'd want him playing because he's that good a player. But it's not been 
the disaster we all thought it was going to be when he went down with that injury. And I think credit to Mohamed Eldeni for that. Okay, so let's talk about Arsenal Tottenham, shall we, on Thursday night. I am down at London Colney tomorrow for Mikel Arteta's press conference. That is, I think it's one o'clock. I need to double check that. I'm pretty sure it's one o'clock again. Um, and I'll try and do a video after that press conference looking at what he had to say. Um, I, I might not I might not have time to do that to be honest because I've got quite a lot to do so I might actually do I might do a video in the morning just looking ahead to the game do my predicted 11 maybe something like that you'll we'll have to wait and see what how the time sort of pans out but whatever happens I will be at London Colony so keep your eye on my social media for all the updates of that press conference as it happens Antonio Conte has been doing his today on Tuesday and he's been talking a little bit about the game first of all team news wise for Tottenham it doesn't seem like they've got too many problems there's no regular on again Conte has said he obviously missed out um with injury from the Liverpool game in the last couple of games, he's not going to be available. But other than that, it's the same team, the same squad that played against Liverpool. So nothing major in terms of injury or team news for Tottenham. He was obviously speaking and asked about the fact that this is the rearranged game and that Arsenal should have played it in January or whenever it was. They had the game called off because they had all the injuries and COVID. And we know Tottenham are still annoyed about that. They've made, <laughs> they've made no secret of the fact they're still annoyed about that. Um, and... Yeah, it's interesting his comments, actually. I thought he was going to go stronger, Antonio Conte, on this again. Because um, I thought he was going to try and really play on the fans and try and make sure the atmosphere is going to be as hostile as possible on Thursday. He actually hasn't gone that hard on it, which is a surprise to me. He said, to speak about it, what happened in the past, it is not useful. It was very strange that our game was postponed for COVID and Arsenal didn't have one player with COVID. They did, so but only one. But... Conte got this quote wrong. Um, he said, we lost the game 3-0 because the Premier League didn't want to move a game when we had 10 players out with COVID. At that time, it was unfair. This is the past, though, and we have to be focused on the present to try and get the best result. I think this could be a good chance for us to get three points against the whole team. It's quite fair, really, um, comments then from Conte. And like I said, I, I thought as a sort of power play to try and get the fans even more up for it on Thursday night, he might make a big thing about this so that suddenly all the back pages tomorrow are going to be filled of Conte having a go at Arsenal. Now, just as a caveat to that, this is just the live quotes from the press conference. As I'm sure most of you know when you watch the press conference, the things you see straight away are the broadcast, that's a live section, and then there will be another section later on where stuff will come out at 10.30 in the evening. That basically has been saved for the papers. It's called the embargo section. I don't know what he said. I wasn't in it. I don't know what he said in the embargo section. So maybe he's gone a lot stronger than that. And we'll see the quotes when they come out online at 10.30 p.m. tonight. And they will be the ones that we see in the newspapers tomorrow. So he still may, uh, we still may see back pages tomorrow full of quotes having a go at Arsenal and the Premier League and that sort of thing. But for now, just from these live quotes that we're seeing just now that have come out in the broadcast section of the press conference, he's not quite gone as uh, hard as I thought he was going to. Also talking about the game in sort of general, he says we are talking about a really important game, important for many different situations. First, we are playing this game for an important target, placed in the Champions League. Uh, I also know the importance for the fans for the derby. This is the first time they're playing this derby in their stadium with all the fans. We have to try and get three points at Arsenal. We are talking about a really good team, really well organised. Arteta is doing a really good job. He's had the possibility to work and improve his team in this moment of the season. It has to give us a big push. It's right there. It's going to be interesting. I hadn't really thought of that, that this is the first time in the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, the new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, that it's going to be full. It's the first time Arsenal are going to have any away fans fans at Derby. It's the first time Tottenham are going to have all of their fans at the Derby. I think one of them was behind closed door. The other, there was 2,000 Tottenham fans in there. Uh, that was loud enough, that game with the 2,000 Tottenham fans. The atmosphere on Thursday night is going to be absolutely incredible. It's going to be so hostile. It's going to be, uh, yeah, it's going to be an absolute cauldron in there. And the Arsenal fans are going to make just as much noise over in that away section. I'm really looking forward to the atmosphere for that one. So that's what Antonio Conte's had to say about the game. Like I said, quotes-wise on the actual match being postponed, not as hard as I thought he was, unless he's saving those for the embargo section that we're going to see later on tonight. And again, just quick update, just latest on their team news, Tottenham ahead of the game, no Regulon, but everyone else is fine. So pretty much the exact same squad that they took to the game against Liverpool at the weekend. Okay, before I go, a little bit on some transfer talk. Nicolas Pepe's future, he is the subject of interest from Sevilla, according to reports in Spain. Interesting one, this, I think, Nicolas Pepe, what happens to him in the summer? I'm pretty convinced if Arsenal get anything like a decent offer for Nicolas Pepe, they will accept it in a heartbeat. Um, good player, has, you know, his numbers have been fairly decent since he's been at Arsenal. He's 
it's just not worked out for whatever reason. He's not worth £72 million. I think we all know that. I think we all knew that within about three months of watching him play. But that's not saying he's not a good player. He is. It's just Arsenal overpaid massively for him. And he's not been able to nail down a starting spot. He didn't do it under Unai Emery when he first arrived. And he hasn't done it since... Um, uh, Mikel Arteta replaced Dunai Emery. He's had some good spells. He had a very good spell at the end of last season, but he just hasn't quite done it. He hasn't been able to kick on for that. When he has had opportunities, he hasn't been able to take them. We saw what happened at the weekend. I just think there's a frustration amongst the Arsenal coaching staff at times when it comes to Nicolas Pepe. And um, it just does feel like the time is right to, for the club just to say, you know what, it hasn't worked. Time for you to move on. It'd be best for the player as well to go out and start playing a lot more minutes because he's good enough to be playing regular minutes. Um, you know, it's just a case of finding the right club for him, finding a club who might be able to pay some sort of money for him. Because there's one thing that is for sure is Arsenal are going to get nothing like £72 million back for Nicolas Pepe. They're going to have to take a huge, huge hit on the transfer fee. Whether, you know, they might get £20 million, maybe £15 million, I, I really don't know. But, you know, I've seen some people say, oh, let's just sell him for £30, £35 million. It's just never, ever going to happen. Um, that sort of money, especially on the wages that he's on. It's not going to be easy to get rid of Nicolas Pepe. Um, and, but Sevilla believed to be interested. Whether Arsenal would even contemplate a loan, perhaps, hope that, and think he might go off, have a very good loan spell somewhere, and that will help keep his value or protect his value. But then on the back of that, you also have to say it's another year of his contract gone. I think he'd then only have one year left in his contract next season, so his value will start going down anyway. It just feels like this is the summer to part ways with Nicolas Pepe and to move him on, especially as Arsenal will be bringing in another wide forward or certainly are looking to bring in another wide forward this summer. Anyway, so we'll have to wait and see, but certainly reports in Spain saying Sevilla and Monchi are uh, in for him and if the price is right, they would be interested in taking him. So that would be interesting to see exactly what Arsenal go for with him. There's also been linked with uh, William Saliba being linked with AC Milan. John Cross at the Mirror has reported that today. Interesting on that. Ivan Gazidis coming back, knocking on Arsenal's door. Um, Saliba, as, I, as I've reported a while ago, it's all going to be cu come down to what talks they have at the end of the season um, when they actually properly sit down face-to-face -face and discuss in terms of Saliba's future. And I'm talking about his representatives and Arsenal then. His representatives want to know exactly what Arsenal have planned for Saliba. And... Um, and if those talks aren't successful and if maybe he doesn't think that what Arsenal have planned for him is regular first team football, then he will say, look, maybe it's best for all party that we move on. We'll have to wait and see what happens. With it. It's all up in the air. Nothing has been decided when it comes to Saliba and Arsenal at the moment. You know, Arsenal continue to maintain his part of their plans and all that, but... Let's face it, if it was really part, if it was definitely 100% part of the plans, then he probably would have played by now anyway. Although I do think, and I still maintain, that this has been a very, very good loan for Saliba. You look at his progress this season with Marseille, it's been fantastic. He would they would not has been he would not have had that progress at Arsenal because it was pretty clear that Ben White and Gabriel were going to be first choice starters this season. Arsenal haven't had any European football to play with, so he just wouldn't have got many minutes. Similar to Rob Holding. Now, you know, he hasn't had that many minutes. Yes, he's having a good run now, but he hasn't had many minutes in the, in throughout the season. If Saliba would have stayed, he would have been in the same situation. And his progression that he's seen this season with Marseille just wouldn't have happened. So I do think it's been a good loan spell. Whether he comes back now and really kicks on and takes that form and makes a successful stay at Arsenal, I just don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see. But there's going to be plenty of clubs like John is reporting now that AC Milan are interested in him. There are going to be plenty of clubs interested in William Saliba this summer because of his age, because of his quality, because of what he's shown this season for Marseille. And it's just going to come down to what Arsenal decide. Do you give him a new contract? Arsenal are going to have to weigh that up as well. Would he sign a new contract? That's something Saliba is going to have to decide when he has talks with Arsenal and they talk to and they tell him about what their long-term plans are for him. It's all just so up in the air. He's got to finish the season. Arsenal have to finish the season. Then everyone's going to get together and it will be worked out one way or the other. I know lots of you want Saliba to come back and be a massive success story at Arsenal. I'd love to sit here right now and tell you that it's going to happen. But I can't because nothing has been decided yet. And while all this uncertainty goes on, there are going to be plenty of clubs like AC Milan who are going to be hovering right above the situation, trying to muscle in if it is decided that Saliba is going to move on. We'll wait and see. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Appreciate your time as always. I will be back at some point tomorrow, so keep your eyes peeled, whether it will be in the morning or it will be after the press conference. Just keep your eyes peeled for my latest video to drop, but there will be one coming tomorrow. So enjoy the rest of your day. I'll speak to you soon.